Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart, and welcome to another Epic Battles Waterloo campaign painting tutorial. And this time, it's been probably the second most requested um, painting tutorial I've had, um, other than the French, until I did, got round to doing them. And that's the British Highlanders. Now, those of you who have seen my original painting tutorial on this on this um, sort of project on this release was the British Line Infantry. Um, and um, much of what I do today will be very, very similar to that. The fact that the whole torso, um, backpack, gun, etc., uses exactly the same method. So those of you that are already familiar with the painting tutorials may want to skip some of that ahead until they get to the points a little bit later on. Um, it, you may not, you may just want to leave it playing in the background while you're painting away or something like that as well. But um, I'm going to take you through how I paint this whole strip and then show you how the, the final unit looks at the end. Now, there were three regiments um, at Waterloo or the Hundred Days campaign that wore kilts. And there were there was another Highland Regiment as well, but there were three Highland Regiments. So we have the 42nd, which are the Black Watch, the 92nd Gordon Highlanders and the 79th Cameron Highlanders. I'm going to today show you how to paint all three. Um, basically, the, the only differences are the facings, so the, the collars, cuffs, um, so to speak, and the tartan on the kilts and, and the odd other minor thing, which I'll, uh, even if I don't show you how to do, I'll, I'll make a note of talking you through it. The ones I'm working on here um, will be the 79th Cameron Highlanders, but then I have a pre-prepared strip of both the others so that once I've fully completed this one, I'll spend a couple of minutes just showing you how I approach the different tartans, but that's right at the end of the video. So let's get started. So what we have pre-prepared here is a strip of the 13.5 millimeter Warlord Games Epic Battles British Highland uh, Infantry. They have pre-prepared, so they've been primed black, airbrushed top down with white, and then dry brushed with white to give this kind of grayscale zenithal um, preparation. Um, I, I haven't shown you how to do that on camera. Uh, those of you who have watched a lot of these videos, I know I keep repeating this, but if you want to see how that actually works and how you do it, I'll pop a little link in now and in my first um, tutorial for the British Line Inventory I actually show you that part of the process but rather than repeating it in each video you just get me repeating these words instead. Um, but what that gives you as I said is this grey scale looking miniature um, and that, so the reason I do that is because when you add thin layers of paint over the top it provides you with some natural shading and highlights already which means you need to do less which is fantastic on smaller scale miniatures like these and I'm going to be using prime primarily citadel contrast paints a little bit of army painter speed paints as well for my base layers then after that i do highlight on top of those with standard paints afterwards just to really make them pop you don't have to do the final highlighting stages and once we reach that kind of midpoint stage of basic tabletop i will, I will mention it at the time but anyway the first color we'll be using which i already just showed you there will be contrast blood angels red and i use that to pick out all the red on the jackets so on this first pass I will aim to pick out all the red on the jackets and maybe a couple of little things as well. So there's often red on the plume, depending on the regiment, depending on where it's placed. Um, I use the wonderful um, uniform guides on um, the website, which I'm just going to pop a little link in now, but I'll pop some images on the screen. Um, it's a French website. Um, there's a Monster John Waterloo website, and um, you might want to hit if you're not if you don't speak French, you might want to pop the translate um, function on your browser. Um, but you'll get once you learn your way around navigating, you'll find you probably won't use the translate because um, you can find your way around it. But it gives some wonderful uniform guides. They may not be 100% accurate, and I like to use Osprey books and other uniform guides and things as well. But for 100 Days campaign, this gives me a pretty good idea of of the uniforms, what colour facings were, what colour braid and buttons were, what colour plumes were, and in this case as well, tartans. So as we move around to the front, we're still working on the red. I just wanted to pick out a few little important parts really. The first one is where possible try to keep the red only where you'd like the red to be and that might seem obvious um, but also 
in many ways when you paint you don't worry about going over the edges too much because you'll just put another layer over the top but because we've spent the time and effort doing this pre-shade this pre-highlight using the zenithal um, process with the black and then the white and then the dry brushing you can touch it up but to touch up too large an area you do lose some of the the effect that you get so i'm spending a little bit more time on this first layer trying to leave the white where i'm now i'm going to be placing other colors afterwards which in a lot of cases with this is actually going to be white itself with all the the braiding and the white cross belts etc but also things like the cuffs where I'm going to use contrast for the facings and they paint over the white color a lot better. Now I will make some mistakes, it's impossible not to, but I try to keep them to a minimum and then I'll just touch them up with a little bit of white or gray later on. And there we go, that's all the red. And as you can see, I made the odd little mistake, but I've left most of the white areas. And that is the probably the most laborious part of it in terms of trying to stay within the lines. Um, but I do feel it's worth it. It's a lot easier to touch up and paint in the white cross straps here from a base like that, rather than painting back over the red again. It's far harder and takes longer in the long run, even though it feels painful and all you want to do is spray the whole strip red. So the next stage, I'm actually gonna, there's lots of things you could do now. It doesn't really matter too much on, on the um, order, but I'm gonna go for the flesh first and I'm gonna use Contrast Gilliman Flesh. So that's all the base layers of flesh on. It's always good just to have a little scoot along and double check that you've not missed a hand. I tend to do it all the time. Of course, on these guys, you've got to do their legs as well, got to do their knees. And occasionally there's a hand poking out at the back, um, depending on the strip that you're painting. So it's worth checking those things. Right, next stage now, I'm going to do the base layer of the kilts. And I'll just pop the images on the screen again now. Now, the kilts themselves um, are really, really hard to represent at this scale and I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail towards the end of the video um, but it's quite hard to choose a base color um, on some of the tartans some is very easy you can see what the, the most dominant color is and that becomes your base for this one I would say it's green but there are some strong hints of blue in there so it's about making sure you get all of those colors in there but to, to keep it short now I'll just say that we're going to base them with green which is what I did with the other two um, regiments as well and for that I'm using contrast dark angels green So that's the base layer of the kilts in. I'm now gonna pick out the facings. Um, so here, we're mainly looking at the cuffs. On some of the miniatures, you can get into um, their collars as well. By the time you've painted it all, they don't really stand up very well. So it's something you can leave if you're not interested in doing that. So I'm gonna be using Contrast Orc Flesh. They are green facings on the 79th. So the next stage, we're going to be painting the muskets themselves. And for that, I always start with the wood, but I do cover the, pretty much the whole musket, including the barrel and bayonet, or part of the bayonet. And I'm gonna be using gore, gore grunt of fur, which is another little contrast paint, funnily enough. All right, the next stage is to pick out their water canteens. Now, there's very, very minimal on display on these miniatures. The guy at the end of the rank, you can just see it there. And then there's just a little hint of it in between most of the men in there. For that, I'm gonna be using Contrast Talisar Blue. Now getting towards the end of the base coat layer now, we're going to onto the black and I'm gonna be using Contrast Black Templar. So we have the boots to do, hats, we have, if we turn to the back, we have their packs as well, as well as the ammunition pouches. And on some of them, you can just see at the side here, their, their sheath for their bayonets. So next up, we're going to be using scale 75 black metal to pick out the metal areas. So we're looking at the bayonets and the gun barrels. So next up is to do the hair. And for those, I will use three paints, Gore Grunt of Fur, Nasdrag Yellow, and Wildwood. 
and thus we reach that stage where you actually could leave it here if you wanted to you don't have to do any further highlights now if you uh, did want to leave it at the base coat layer i would suggest a couple of things we haven't actually painted any white in yet on top of the pre-shaded webbing and things so just touching those up a little bit would go a long way to really make it pop and stand out and you might just want to add a gold or a brass color just on the the front here but other than that you could leave it no there's no rule hard and fast rule out there that says you must paint the tartan on these miniatures um, um i'm going to show you how to do it in, in a later and what i feel is a quite a simple way of doing it but it won't be for everyone and there's nothing wrong with just having uh, your highland troops with with green kilts like that they were absolutely fantastic all mass ranked on the table but I am going to continue as usual and uh, highlight and really kind of bring the miniatures out. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, is make that red pop. I'm gonna highlight it with Citadel Color Evil Sun Scarlet. So with the red highlighted, I just want to go back to the skin and just make it pop a little bit more. I'm going to be using Vallejo Noctua Range Fairy Flesh. And the, the idea here is just to pick up on the bridge of the noses, the, the cheekbones and the tops of the hands, just to make sure that they don't look quite so grim and dirty. So next up we have what is almost the final stage on the standard British line infantry and that's removing all the extra detail you have to do with the kilts and things here but so we're going to be using model cutter off-white to kind of fill in and brighten up all of the webbing all of the, um, the, the white areas of the hats the tops of the socks etc and it really really makes it pop and tidies out and again that would be a place you could you could leave it if you didn't want to um, go in and add the kilts and things but um, we'll, we'll, we'll show you this area and then we can see afterwards and that's all the white touched up and don't forget to uh, make sure that you touch up the straps on the back and the little bits around their bread bags and things as well anyway next stage using scale color necro gold i'm just going to pick out the little plate that's on the front of this cross straps there and then using game air silver I'm just going to pick out the metallics on the guns and bayonets again and the buttons just as a quick highlight now we move on to the final few stages now i'll pop another little image on the screen all three highland regiments that i'm going to be demonstrating today all have the uh, pattern around their hats so you, on the white area there you have a kind of a checker pattern and on the tops of the socks as well there's a pattern there now obviously on miniatures this size it's very very hard to make that look exactly like that so what we want to do really is just represent it in one way or another now you don't have to again you could you could leave this off and, off and regard it as a little bit too fiddly um, but i'm just going to um, do a little do some little hash marks and, and things just to kind of represent it so on the tops of the hats it's going to be a little line uh, um, horizontally and then some um, um, vertical lines down and something similar but a few less lines on the tops of the socks And there we are and if you look really closely and you can probably see on the camera now it's pretty messy but it's there just to give that indication of the color and the markings that were there um, you, you, someone with a really steady hand out there I'm sure has done it absolutely perfectly neatly I'm not the neatest of painters um, but I think from uh, from a few feet away it looks fine that's all you need like I said before you can completely leave that as well if you want to you don't you can just leave it white you can maybe paint it red whatever you feel matches what you want to do with it the best now onto the really tricky part which i suppose potentially tricky part which is is the tartan which is what everyone is scared of now there are hundreds and hundreds of good tutorials out there for painting tartan most of them designed for 28 millimeter miniatures and above and um, they range from being fairly basic just talking about layering of grids which is essentially what it is up to really really detailed that teaches you how to do some really intricate patterns that almost exactly cover the way 
tartan looks. Now, we're not gonna do that for these miniatures. I'm sure a competition winning painter somewhere, some excellent top end painter could, could do it at this scale. I don't wanna do that. We've got 80 miniatures, well, 77 if you minus the three in trousers in this regiment that, that needed this tartan. I'm painting three regiments of these, ridiculous amount of models to paint tartan on in, in, in extremely high detail. So what we want to do is give the impression of it, and I'm going to take you through it um, one at a time for each of the different regiments as we go. So these are already pre-prepared. So I'll move those to side again. Um, we're going to continue with the, the 79th because that's what we've been using for this entire tutorial. And they have the, what I would say the most complicated in terms of reproducing it. Um, again, I'll pop the image on the screen, the same image you've seen a few times there. Um, and there's the tartan pattern. And now the tartan um, has what I would say, what looks like more than one dominant color. The other tartans as we come onto them seem a little bit too color and much, much easier to represent. Whereas this, it feels like if you just leave off one of the, the three colors, it doesn't quite match. So I think it's got a greenish base, but quite a heavy blue to it as well, with some red and that little yellow line as well. And I found if you miss out the yellow, it, it, it doesn't look different enough from the others. So I've come up with a, with, a, with a very basic system, which incorporates, obviously the green's already there as a base, the blue, the red, and the yellow. So what I'll start with is some royal blue from model color. And essentially what I'll do is I'll paint a basic grid on, on the tartan themselves. So we're talking about two vertical lines, and one across on the fronts. Then I'll move on to layer Evil Sun's Scarlet, which is the Citadel color paint. And with that, I will paint another grid, but less lines. So one in the center of the two blue, and one generally to the side, one way or another, not worrying about being too accurate. And then I'll finish with a slightly thinner layer of um, Phalanx Yellow. Um, and that again, I will place in a slightly different place than the other two. Now it doesn't match the tartan on the screen there at all but it gives enough of a impression of not only tartan, but uses the colors that's in that tartan and makes them stand out in the context of the other two regiments as well. So that's the plan. Let me, let me show you how to do it. Now, hopefully I'll be able to show you this correctly on camera. Um, it's quite hard. It's not the normal position I get in to, to paint these lines, but the way I've been, been doing it, as I mentioned previously, is to work on a couple of vertical lines going all the way along all of the kilts then once the vertical lines there I'm doing one horizontal line fairly central now, as I've already mentioned this tartan is probably not the easiest to sort of replicate on such a small miniature and I'm just trying to incorporate the colours that, that, that are there. So what I do won't actually look like the tartan but I think it also said it will work in the context of the three regiments that I'll be painting. So next up I'm using red and I'm placing a um, vertical line in between the two vertical blue ones. I'm working my way down and I'm really I'm just adding these colours in really as a suggestion. Now on to a horizontal line, and again, just so they don't go directly over a blue, rather than central, I'm doing this just in the bottom third. And the final color is of course yellow. Now I've watered this paint down a little bit more, I don't mind if it's quite a thin line, and then this is a little bit more of a suggestion again. So what I'm doing is placing it to my right, um, the model's left of the red line. Um, it may go over the blue a little bit, or just inside, that's not a major issue. Bit of a, all right, consistency. Bit of a thinner line if possible. Again, just a little a suggestion. It doesn't matter if it goes over the blue a little bit, we are now just adding colour to add suggestions of the tartan being there. We are in no way trying to replicate the pattern of the tartan. We're just using the main colours 
of that tartan in a crisscross pattern essentially and what it'll do is it'll fool the eye into believing that there's tartan there Then back to horizontal again, and this one, rather than the bottom third, I'm placing it in the top third. And there we are, tiny tartan. Now, <laughs> I'll keep saying this, I appreciate if you look at this next to the image, that is not the same tartan. Uh, I just couldn't work out a way to represent all of the colours that are in that tartan without um, doing something like this and I think if I look at that as a miniature uh, for me it looks like they're wearing tartan kilts um, and this is the, the drawing in the colours that I can see in that tartan and, and doing some kind of approximation. Um, now we'll move on to the other two regiments the, the Black Watch 42nd and the 92nd as well now they've got slightly simpler patterns so I'll just run you through quickly how I'm about to approach those. So here we are with the Black Watch, the 42nd. Now you'll notice that the miniatures have been finished completely in every other way. I've already added on blue facings. They're a little bit lighter than, than they would have been, but that's the same I've, uh, sort of done with quite a few of the other blue facings I've done on the armies just to, to make them pop on a, such a small um, scale miniature, really. I quite like them to, to stand out on the battlefield. And um, you may want to tone them down slighter, slightly. Now the Black Watch is, um, tartan is, is, is probably more simple to replicate it is um, much easier to say that it's based on a green and then there are some blue and some black on top so I'm going to use a very very similar process I'm going to add in some blue and the way I'm going to do that with these is go for a central cross more because I think the black is more dominant again this is about keeping it simple so we're starting with a vertical line and then where I can to the periphery to the sides I'm just adding more vertical lines they may not be full strokes because they might be hidden under a bread bag or under the the butt of a musket or something, but just adding in second and third vertical marks downwards. With those in place, we move to a single horizontal line. Now I'm making this fairly central. And then black. And the black is going to go either side in vertical lines, either side of the blue vertical line, all the way along. And as before, we go in with a slightly lower horizontal line. The black is very dark, so it doesn't show up very well, especially on camera. It does cover a lot of the blue, so while in the real tartan, the black is definitely over the top of the other colours. I've just gone back in, well, not every single blue line, but occasionally just reinforcing the blue in some areas. Just to give the appearance of the blue coming back through. I think that just brightens it up. Now it's simpler. Um, and it's easier to, to figure out from the eye what colours you need. Um, I don't think it stands out as much as the, um, the, as the 79th, but um, it, you've definitely got black, blue, and, uh, and the green base in there. Now with the 92nd, it's pretty much the same as the, the black watch, but with yellow added, but I'm going to be leaving the black out, because I think it will get too messy to have the dark green, the dark black, blue and the yellow all in one so we're going to go in with the blue as we did the first time round with the double tram lines and as before we move on to horizontal 
I'm going to make that bottom third again. And we, we're now on to the yellow. And uh, the way I'm going to do that will be a vertical line in between the two blue ones. And then a horizontal one. And here we are all finished and based. So this is the, the 79th, so the, the unit that you saw throughout the video. Um, I don't know if it's the actual strip that I was painting. I think that's uh, the, the rear strip actually of the command stand, but I'll show you some pictures um, shortly of the, the whole unit and, and you can uh, get the effect all, all in one. Um, but um, hopefully the tutorial's been useful for you and um, me showing you the different um, ways that I've done the slightly different types of of tartan helps. Um, with that in mind let's have a, a quick look at the other two closer up again. So here's the black watch and I haven't finished painting the units for the for the other two regiments so it's just the single strip but I wanted to sort of show you all three tartans and how I wanted to approach them and, and just how that using um, a few simple lines you can give some kind of representation even if it's not 100% accurate. And here's the 90 seconds, these are the Gordon Highlanders and that's the the final um, of the different uh, tartan types and I don't think I mentioned when I was filming but it was probably quite self-evident that these again have slightly different facings on, um, these are using yellow facings. And for those interested, this is the, the command stand for the, the 79th. I won't be doing a separate video for the command on these. I think the standard British infantry video will give you all you really need to know alongside a little bit of your own research about um, what what facing some things you need. Um, the, the, the only real difference here is the bagpipes compared to the drummers um, on the standard line. Um, and and I, I've actually just looked at the bagpipes that were in the studio paint scheme and it looks a fairly sort of dull grey greenish colour so I've just painted it a slightly different green. Not sure what colour it, it would have been. All the colour plates I've found have, have all got drummers rather than pipers so I thought I'd just go with the, um, the, the studio paint scheme. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. This has probably been a little bit longer than some of the tutorials just because of showing you the extra tartan and things like that but I do hope it was useful for you. Um, if you haven't come across the channel before do carry on looking at the uh, other epic videos and things I've got lots of painting tutorials lots of content for epic battles among other things as well if you like the video give us a like if you like the other things on the channel um, think about subscribing and thank you very much and I'll catch you soon